Welcome back to the sweatshop. In today's video, we're going to be working on this 2006 Nissan X Trail. What we're doing in today's video is we are replacing the right front lower control arm on this X Trail, which is a Canada only car. I don't know why. I think it would have been a good car for the States. Nonetheless, we got it here in Canada. We also get to see uh, some of Nissan's stupidity in the 2000s where I don't know if they're still doing this, but for a long time and well, knowing Nissan probably still till now, include their bullet joints as a permanent part of the lower control arm, which is just stupid. This ends up costing the customer quite a bit more because not only is there a good size labor charge, there is a potential for an alignment to be had as well as the cost of the part. Unfortunately, the cost of the bullet joint which comes with a control arm is ridiculously expensive. And that is why we are replacing the control arm because the bullet joint is permanently affixed to it. Stupid Nissan. Anyhow, not a hard job provided there's not too much rust tight on your control arm you will have to touch your cv so you'll need a big torque wrench and a lot of strength in order to torque that thing back it also is quite it can be quite involved you can get away with doing with basic hand tools and a big hammer but it is probably best that you sit back and uh, well uh, unless you're in a nice tropical country where there's no rust tight to deal with, let a professional handle this so you don't rip whatever hair you have remaining on your head out. And you may be asking yourself how I know you're going through male pattern baldness. Don't worry, this is not a plug for whatever ad. Uh, it's just because if you're if, if you're not wealthy enough to pay someone to work on your shitbox and you're doing it yourself because you're watching this video. Um, I'm sorry, man. We're both in the same position. Life is tough. Anyhow... Let's go ahead now, put this thing up in the air. That being said, make sure if you are going to attempt this, you use a jack stand. Do not get under your car with a jack so that it can fall on you. And now you're, 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 you're now balding and potentially not alive anymore because you were cheap and you know just don't don't do it, man. Don't you don't want to go out like that. Don't do it. Use a jack stand. That being said. Do me a big favor, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. Let me yak it up! I did that in one of the other videos and I liked it, it made me happy, so I repeated it. Don't judge me. Now, with your car up in the air, you may be wondering, how the hell do I check this thing and, you know, save myself some money, potentially, if it's not my joint? Well, you might fool yourself if you do the traditional wiggle wiggle test, which is like this. And the like this, I'm doing the top and bottom, but you can't see that because, well, there's not enough room. So let's pretend this is the outer side of the wheel and we're going back and forth like that. You're not going to feel any play on this particular joint because of well the suspension not being at its normal or natural state but the joint is built a little bit different it's kind of like a european joint uh, where you have to check the thing with a pry bar to ensure that there is no play because two things the joint is loaded up and it doesn't usually lose its stiffness in this position where you would traditionally check it i hope that makes sense three hours of sleep that's the best uh, explanation i could come up with at this point rest assured though i checked it on a day where i did get some sleep so i know it's bad anyhow what we're going to do now is fire off the wheel and then I'll put this thing up all the way and I'll show you with a pry bar what a bad joint looks like on this junker. Now, just a heads up, I will be removing the wheels in this video, but I won't be putting them on when you are torquing them. I will give you the torque spec. Uh, hell, I'll just give it to you now. The torque spec for these guys when you're putting them on is 83 foot pounds or 113 Newton meters. Remember to torque it in a star shaped pattern like so and then check it and then double check it. One, two, three, four, and five. Then you're good to go. Always torque your wheels like that. Switch overs, whatever, whenever you touch them or have them off. Gun. Now, a surefire way is to stress the joint with a pry bar. Grab your pry bar, stick it between the joint and the hub, and pry down. You can see that movement there.
That there is an indication that we have a bad joint. There is no other way to tell unless the joint gets really bad that this thing is bad. And oftentimes if you take it into a shop, they may just dismiss your claim and send you right out the door. But of course, the reason why I do these videos is so that you can have some knowledge so you don't get taken advantage of by some lousy shit mechanic. Anyhow, what we're gonna do now is start pulling this guy off of the car. Most importantly, what you want to do whenever doing this job is to make sure that at your local parts store, besides this guy being in stock, you wanna make sure that the link is in stock as well because you gotta remove that guy in order to get this bucket off. All right, let's, let's less blah, 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 and more ding, 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 ting, pow, ting, pow, ting, pow, ting, pow. You know, that's that's small and big gun noises. Grab it in the nose of ice cream and start bending this cotter pin. You're gonna bend it back slowly. Uh, if you don't have one, you can reuse them. It is suggested though that you get a new one. Because, well, new is all the better. I think that guy's a 32. Let's see if my uh, eyes. Uh, serve me correctly and if they don't i'll just edit it out because it's my goddamn video and i'll do as i want to do as i want to what's the name of that song if anybody knows leave it in the comments there's that pile of shit compressor to ruin my clip but it's okay because this is going to make a lot of noise make sure you push on the joint because if it doesn't move when you push on it, that determines how much tears are gonna flow from your eyes because that can be a real pain in your ass, uh, which nobody wants to deal with. Anyhow, now to the other side. Now, before we become a victim of our own stupidity for choosing this as a profession, what you wanna do is get your 17 mil and uh, see how much uh, tears are going to flow. Not cooperating. I thought that shock oil would help, but it's being a bitch. Anyhow, let's get our offset wrench and a five or six mil Allen. Where are you, Allen? This is not an Allen, it's a wrench. I understand that, but whatever. I picked it up first because that's what I saw. Slide it into place. Get a six a mil. Let's see. Is it six? Eh? Oh, he's sexy, but he's not sexy. Yeah, that's garbage. Uh, I think I have a six mil impacto half inch. I think I do, I think I do, I think I do. Give it a get it, give it a it and shut up. Uh, let's get a half inch ratchet that we like. Uh, if you do have this set up, it'll make your life easier, but it will break easily, so don't, don't go crazy, yeah? Uh, we want to go to the... On position and turn it, yes. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, damn it. I hate it when it slips out. Such a pain in the ass, you know? Especially if you catch it at the wrong angle and then you, you can damage or hurt the uh, nut. And uh, that's not cool, you know? <laughs> Nobody likes that. Because if you don't have a replacement nut, which most people don't. Uh, nobody has a bucket of nuts, you know what I mean? So that's a good thing actually. If you work on cars, have a bucket of nuts because these things are a pain in the ass to get, especially if you're in North America or the United States. Everything's all standard and stuff, which is dumb because all cars are mainly metric unless you're working on an old uh, American car. It's just a headache you can avoid by having some nuts. Now, just pull this guy out, remember, there is this washer put it aside or put the joint up whatever make sure you don't lose it okay now it's also a good time to check the joint by shaking it vigorously to ensure that it has no play because if it does have play it will eventually come out oh i just dropped the washer son of a bitch as i was saying it will eventually come out and give you a headache now on to this side of the joint we're going to take this guy out we're going to take that guy out we're going to slide the whole contraption out of the way without disturbing the cv you do not want to lengthen the cv by pulling it out of the socket or this end here because if you try to get that in uh you can damage it and give yourself a real headache because man oh man putting the cv back into the cage can be a pain in the ass and you do not you do not ever, ever want to get CV grease on your hands because it'll be weeks before it comes off, if ever. Now, uh, let's put this thing up and get the appropriate sockets. 
Now, the only good thing that I have to say about this control arm is, well, yeah, this is really nice. I love this sort of stuff. It's easy to get to, not like some of the other dumb manufacturers that put that goddamn joint in in such a way where it's a real nightmare to slide in. You got to slide it into this little cavity that, you know, the bushing doesn't want to sit in. You got all this other crap that you got to contend with. This is a smart design. If the ball joint was separate from the control arm, I would actually really like that design. Design. But hey, whatever, you know, Nissan's smart in some places and dumb in others. That's just how most manufacturers work because I don't know, sometimes I guess when they're designing they have mild strokes or just bouts of retardation. I don't, I, I can't explain it. I'm, I'm not an engineer. I want it to be, but <laughs> the Ontario government in Canada would not, uh, they, that, you know what? That's a story for another day that if any of you guys watching are from Canada and, and, and have been denied OSAP or really any sort of real education or help uh, dependent upon your area or the uh, schools that you went to, feel free to comment in the comments below. Yeah, I, I unfortunately went to a area, I went to school in an area that was, well, there you could see by my English skills that I didn't really learn much at school. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, yeah, my schooling was, uh, it was good and bad, like anything in life. All right, whatever, enough blah, blah, blah. Maybe I just throw that shit in the bloopers. 19. Okay, that's enough of that shit. Bigger gun. You know, that DeWalt gun says it has 400 foot-pounds of nut-busting torque. I don't know, man. This guy's got a thousand, so. I mean, they say that, but... You know, if you're interested in actually taking a look at that sort of stuff, a channel that I really like is the Torque Test Channel. Uh, those guys are, <laughs> they do some really cool stuff that I've always been curious about as a technician. So if you're a technician, watch, go check those guys out. They're pretty good. And uh, well, if you're Canadian, did I say Canadian or Canadian? What if, what, if, what happened there? Uh, anyhow, if you're Canadian, there is also another channel that I really like who tests stuff, just random crap, and he gives you all sorts of, you know, really cool, uh, well, knowledge. And he says things like Skookum, which makes him friggin' awesome. He's a West Coaster Canadian fella who I really like, and uh, I th I'm pretty sure his channel is AVE, and he's got the little, looks like an electric electrical component with in the shape of a face, and I think it's blue. Yeah, go check those two channels out. They're pretty good. <coughs> in case you're wondering what I like to watch sometimes on YouTube when life allows it. Um, yeah, anyhow, back, back, back to the video. To the front bolt! Now, on many manufacturers, these things like to seize. And on the Nissan so far, on the very few X-Trails that I have worked on in the past, I have not had that issue. But I don't want to find out the hard way by gunning this side that this pile of crap wants to break off inside there. That will ruin your day. Guaranteed, no questions asked, it will irritate you. Get yourself a 22 mil wrench and slide over another wrench on the other end and give it. Alright, that's good news. We've obviously broken it loose. Yes. Very good. Yes, okay, look there. You see what happened? I twisted the nut as the bolt moved. You know what that means? It means, my friends, we will be laughing soon when we remove this whole contraption and it is not seized. That makes you very happy. And when I get happy, I say things in random fucking accents, alright? Don't, I, I don't know why. I just, I do. Well, I don't know. If you're if you're not from the Toronto area, we have a wide, wide range of people from all over the planet. And you know, growing up like that, you learn all sorts of accents. And um, yeah, it's one of the good things of multiculturalism. Uh, and contrary to popular belief, there are bad things too. So yeah, you know. But we're not going to talk about that here because, well, that's just asking for headaches get yourself a 22 mil flex socket sneak it in here and hammer this bolt out la 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 all right huh? yeah. yeah that's right that's right yeah fuck off oh shit uh, oh, okay all right ow fuck uh, if you have the snap-on 22 mil flex socket, it's quite heavy, especially when it hits your thumb. Damn it! Get the mud. <coughs> all right, all right, all right. 
Now, if you're in the same situation that I am in, what you're going to do is just take the same pry bar you used to discover that your joint was a pile of crap and make it the tap, tap, tap very lightly, not too hard. Probably heard that pile of shit compressor. Yeah, just tap it, tap it. Yay! All right, I shall be back. Okay, next step, grab the same pry bar and just, uh, yeah. Now, as I'm prying, you can see there the CV is coming out. Do not let it come out of its socket. Push it back in. Nice shoulder. Okay, and then continue prying. All right. Now, again, just push it out. Remember, your ABS sensor is in the vicinity. Hopefully, you don't have to deal with shock oil. Surprisingly, this doesn't smell like death. Uh, most of them, as I've found out over the years, aren't the worst things shock oil in general is just stinky especially the stuff that came on old mercedes that shit i don't know what it was made from like just like horribly tortured things or people i don't know it it was it reeked man like i used to dismantle old german cars and boy oh boy the shocks when they would come apart were just horrendous they were just disgusting <clears throat> So I'm traumatized from that, and that's why I always mention, uh, you know, shock oil. Or maybe my nose is just dead and I don't know it, and my brain has made a mental block against this sort of shit. Anyhow, that's enough blah, blah, blah. What we're going to do now is separate our CV from the joint, from the spindle. I mean, stupid. Now, in order to do this and make it easier on yourself, turn the ignition to accessory one or position one, and then go over to the other side. Turn the wheel all the way to the opposite side of the control arm. This is the right side, so we're gonna turn it all the way to the left, pushing the tie rod all the way in its outermost position on the right side. I hope that made sense. I don't fucking know if it did. There we go! Now, you just push this like so, you pull the CV shaft out, and uh, you place it somewhere safe. That's it. Yeah, keep it safe. Now, get a flex socket that will fit over this guy, and away you go. Just bash that guy out. Of course, before you do that, there is a cotter pin. You want to try and get that cotter pin out, because if you can, it just makes it a little bit easier to get your socket over. I probably won't be able to well we'll attempt it let's see take a needle nose vice grip and work it in oh i mean clamp it like so yeah that's just not gonna move is it i don't know is it yeah no that's just not gonna move bend her over so you can get the socket in there let's see what size i think it's a 22 oh yeah oh yeah baby get yourself an extension i'm gonna get my pneumatic gun and we're gonna da -da 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 -da. all right baby Oh, come on, get, get it in the hole. Get it in the hole. Yeah. Put it in reverse and ting pow. Yeah, baby. See that shit? That's what I'm talking about. Take your air hammer, if you have one, and you're gonna tap this area here gently. Do not hit it overly hard. You don't wanna damage this portion here in any way, shape, or form. Wow, the controller is very close to my camera, so now I'm afraid if it's gonna hit it, damn it. Anyhow, let's, let's, uh, let's put the nut back there so that the control arm does not fall and damage my, uh, what do you call that thing of a bobber? My tripod. Thread that garbage back on there, good to go. Now, because this is a garbage joint, we don't care about the nut or stud. So we're just going to hammer the nut and stud predominantly instead of the spindle. That way we don't leave too many scars on the spindle. Turn this guy up to 10 and hit it. See, there we go. We have a little bit of, uh, you know, shiny spot here. And we have a joint that is disconnected relatively easily. And just twist it out and throw it on the floor. Because fuck this joint. Well, I never show you guys all my garbage, but I got a lot of garbage on the floor that I got to deal with. And I really don't want to. Now, thing to do that is a good idea, but can ruin your life. Take a flat screwdriver, clean out any rust or debris that you have in there. Remember, do not be overly aggressive. Do not get anything on the seal of the bearing. You will ruin your bearing. On the flip side, if you leave that crap in there, it'll also ruin your bearing. So, get a nice flat screwdriver like so, as you do. You do a little bit like this. All right, there we go. There we go. 
You're just scraping it out there, buddy. Now, why I'm doing this is because obviously you can see the residue from the shock that's leaking. And <coughs> what oil likes to do is oil likes to collect all kinds of garbage. That garbage will make its way into your well bearing, and that just makes everything bad. It's also now a good time to check the bearing by spinning it like so. Okay, now. Don't worry, we're doing the brakes too. I don't know if I'm gonna film that though. Uh, shocks is next though. Yeah, we're doing shocks. You guys excited? Yeah, watch this video and the next one. Well, whenever I edit it, because that'll probably be a longer video. Okay, I'm gonna shut up now. Okay, yeah, nice uh, 45 minutes has elapsed of me dealing with other issues that tissues won't solve for myself. Uh, go ahead now, shove your joint into place. What I like to do is line that cotter pin hole up straight uh, with regards to the alignment of the spindle. That way it's easy to slide it in. Of course, catch the nut so that thing doesn't fall out if you let it slip somehow and run her up. The aftermarket joint, in my case, is a 22, so that's nice. We're gonna have to tighten that guy up by hand. Uh, screw that, we're gonna use a gun. Low torque noisemaker, ugga dugga, 10,000. Just blip it, and there you can see my cotter pin is accessible. Grab your torque wrench, set it to 57 foot-pounds or 77 newton meters. All right, that is an awkward position. Now, it doesn't tell me what degrees not to exceed, but if your hole does not line up, do not exceed more than 60 degrees, okay? Of course, I don't know if that's the correct specification. Do check it up on your own, but that's usually what I do not exceed because it will strip. Grab your cotter pin, shove it through the hole, and bend it over. Remember, these things are quite sharp and they will try to poke a hole in your fingers, so be careful. Okay, now we can work on getting our CV into place. Now, before you go ahead and put your CV shaft in, what you wanna do is go ahead and put a little bit of anti-seize on the front portion here and then just a little bit here on the front portion of the spline. Do not gob it on, it will kill your bearing. Slide her on in, boy. Watch that. Wonderful ABS sensor. Looks like my CV shaft will collide with my cotter pin. See? That's why you look at everything before you call it fixed. Yeah. Let's pry this down. All right. Don't slip off like I did. It hurts. All right. CV shaft is in. Spectacular. Now, on this side here, we got to just work it in to place. So... What we do is do the easy side first. Grab your bolts, make sure you anti-seize them. You want to anti-seize the head of the bolt because there is a bit of torque and this is a big diameter bolt. It's an M14, so you don't want it to bind up and that way affect the torque value that you can actually get on this thing. Well, before we do any of this, we're gonna straighten out that driver's side wheel. That's better. Now, let's try that again, control arm. Now, with the one bolt holding this contraption in, you're gonna take your mallet and just tap this guy home. Gently is all you need, nothing crazy. It's just a control arm. Now, what you're gonna do is bash as needed to get this guy set in place. Make sure you anti-seize it, clean up any rust or crud, and yeah. I was too lazy to get a screwdriver, but I'm, I'm killing myself bashing it, so let's just uh, there, okay? All right, there we go. There we go. Uh, if your bolt does not go all the way through, I find that running up this guy here will make your life considerably easier. Now, of course, grab your other bolt and thread it in. In case you're wondering, there is a difference and a reason why I selected this particular bolt to put in because the slab of aluminum is slightly thinner, which makes it a little bit easier to kind of maneuver this guy around. It gives you a little bit more freedom. Grab your 19 mil and fire! Now, grab your torque wrench. 
Set your torque wrench to 101 foot-pounds or 138 newton meters. I like double checking because it's aluminum, softer metal, you know, blah, blah, blah. So just double check. Now, in order to tighten up our front joint properly, what we need to do is compress our suspension. So I'm going to get a stand. I'm going to put it on right in this area here of the lower control arm. You're not going to touch the bull joint in any way, shape, or form. Bad. Touching bull joint anywhere here, very, very bad. Don't do it. Uh, you can use a piece of wood or rag or whatever to comfort your aluminum control arm. We're gonna compress this thing to where I think the ride height would naturally sit, and then we're gonna torque that guy down. All right, let's put our stand in place. Let's run it up. And of course, because I have my wonderful hoist, I'm going to use that to compress it quickly. Yeah, look, that looks legit. 22 and low torque ugga dugga fire. 22 wrench as well as your 22 swivel. Grab your torque wrench, set it to 83 foot pounds or 113 newton meters. Grab your wrench in case that guy decides to twist. And there we go. We are good to go. Okay, now we can go ahead and put in our stabilizer link. Make sure you give it a nice helping of anti-seize. Also, only try to put your stabilizer link back into place once you have released all tension on your suspension. Grab your 17 mil and hex and give her the old ratcheting treatment. With that anti-seize in place, it's going to make your life considerably easier. I should have probably just replaced this joint, but hey, this is my brother-in-law's car and they ain't got any money right now. None of us do, but hey, pretty sure most of you folks are in the same position. All right, give it a little snug. And we got to give it a little bit more, it looks like. Oh, stupid ABS sensor, get out of the way. Oh, that's going to slip. Damn it, I need a little bit more offset on my wrench there. Grab your torque wrench and set it to 62 foot-pounds or 83 newton meters. Make sure you stick your finger on the back to ensure that it is not rotating, which this guy is. Ah, you know what I forgot, which uh, I told you not to forget? The washer. Right, let's blast this guy off quickly. Let's put a little load on her and that'll make life a little bit easier. I guess I didn't forget it. Maybe I put it on there and... She just flew off. I don't know. Whatever. Thread her back in. Repeat the process. Okay, let's see if that gave it enough. 62 foot pounds or 83 newton meters. Let's see. What is the verdict? Not enough. It's goddamn twisting. Son of a bitch. Let's do a little bit more blip blip. All right. All right, there we go. All right, that wonderful time has now come for us to put back our CV nut. Like I said, this thing is pretty high torque, so make sure you feel strong. You're also going to help yourself by putting a little bit of anti-seize or grease on this end of the nut. That will help you with dispersing the torque. That way, if there's any little crap in there or whatnot, it doesn't gall or get you the wrong torque value. Blah, blah, blah. Out of the way, take a punch, stick it in the top, of the rotor toward your caliper, what you're gonna do is just make sure it butts up against the caliper. That way it's not gonna go anywhere. You don't have to call a friend. Take your 32 mil and drive her home. Go ahead, set your torque wrench to 217 foot pounds or 294 Newton meters. All right, place this if you have one. I don't, so as I said earlier, you can reuse it. I do have new ones, they're just not as thick and yeah. Get, get, get on the damn thing, man. Now, of course, what I would be telling you if we were gonna put the wheel on is to put a little bit of anti-seize or white lithium grease in that area just to help with the longevity of your hub. That way it doesn't rot to hell and you don't have to kick your rims off the car like the car owes you money of some sort. Don't forget to take your punch out of there. Apply some anti-seize, throw your wheel on. I've got other work to do, so I'm not going to be putting the wheel back on. It's just redundant and something that I don't have to do. Torque spec is 83 
63 foot pounds or 113 newton meters of torque required to torque the lug nuts down make sure you torque them as i stated in the video earlier in a star shaped pattern then a circular pattern to double check and you are good to go well that's all she wrote for this one all you got to do now is take this thing for a test drive make sure there's no weird noises and confirm that all is well with your nissan Hopefully you found the video entertaining as well as informative. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And as always, thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one. <sighs> That's off center. Fuck. Well, this video is off to a wonderful start. Is that centered? Did you fucking collect your thoughts there, camera? Damn it. Is that okay? Stop a moving, stop a moving, don't move, don't move. Now there's a truck, for fuck's sake. Fuck it. The reason why we are con controlling, what? It goes smoothly and we should be able to, what the fuck just happened to the camera? What we're doing in today's video is we are replacing this wonderful contraption. The lower control arm on the passenger side in this country would be the right side everywhere else. Um, that's fucking stupid. Let's just start that shit over again, Jimmy. Nissan did not understand that a ball joint is also something that you can separate from your lower control arm. No, they made it a non-serviceable part because you cannot get a ball joint fucking compressor. Mother of like you gotta be why why the fuck are you not charging like well this one's going to garbage too for fuck's sakes This video is gonna end up six hours long, which if you go to the dealership is quite frankly 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 what the fuck is frankly Jimmy it is quite frankly fuck I did it again quite frankly I don't I, 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 Three hours of sleep bro three hours of sleep in a fucking hot heat wave my brains are on fire You know Fire! Fire! That sounded stupid. Anyhow, quite frankly, I, I did it again. That's the fucking third time. I'm done. We're just replacing the fucking word. Jesus. Now, oh, don't hit the camera for fuck's sakes. Like, get your big fucking foot out of the way. Always double check in a circular motion. So, one, two, three, and four, and five. Uh, I fucked up there. Let's, we'll put that in the bloopers. Grab your pry bar, stick it in between the joint. I should do this from the other side because, well, it's going to block out the camera. It's, you know, want to work on the car, whatever. They may just, they may just dismiss you. I can't say dismiss for fuck's sakes. Um, yeah, anyhow, back, back, back to the video. You know, sometimes when I'm thinking and talking at the same time, I make myself sound like I have a stuttering issue. I actually don't. I'm just, I don't know. The older I get, the maybe I'm developing a stutter. I don't know. Maybe I'll live the second half of my fucking life with a stutter. I don't know. The, 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 sh fuck yourself. <laughs> I don't know why the fuck I said that. Okay, let's... But shock oil in general oil. In general oil? <laughs> <coughs> oh, boy. <coughs> Damn it. Don't drop your bolt. Let's see if she'll fit. Oh, don't kick the camera off oh, for fuck's sakes, man. The whole point of keeping it rolling was not to fuck the shot up, dummy. All right, stabilizer time. Do not forget, you must uh, anti-seize. Well, I must take the load off my suspension as well. So I'm going to do that now off camera because I look stupid. Where the fuck is my 17, man? Son of a bitch. Like... Then set your torque wrench to a fucking value I can't remember right now. Son of a bitch. If you did, please, I'm going to do that over again. Yeah. Yeah.